Hello everyone, I'm going to consider search problems, that's really hard level that I met in exam style questions, actually, that I picked up from the previous exam papers, rearrange a little bit, and what, that's what I've got. So pause the video, try to print screen, try to pause the video, try to do by your own. That's first two problems here, okay, and here is another set with the second also two problems. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started. Here is the problem one. You need to show that this fraction can be written in the form a times 1 plus quarter of 3, where a is an in, in, in integer. Okay, so first of all, I'll just remind you that third is simply a notation that means you have an irrational number. For example, a square root of 2 is going to be a rational number in the same way as pi. And for example, the square root of 3, you cannot evaluate square root out of 3 because it's not perfect square, and that's why you will count finally to a rational number. The main idea is how well you can rationalize denominators. So the medium and easier style questions actually ask you to rationalize denominator. Here is the formulation or statement of the problem, much trickier. So that's why, first of all, if you're not sure how to do that, just try to watch a video about rationalizing denominators first and then come back here for tricky questions. All right, so, <clears throat> and we start doing that. So what we have, we need to show that the fraction can be written in the form. As you understand, there is no denominator or at least LA can be, so in this case, because it's integer, so there is no way to have uh, denominator at all. So that's why first you need to rationalize denominator and simultaneously I'll be trying to simplify the top of the fraction. Okay, so square root of 3 and square root of 27 I can write as 3 square root of 3 and that's squared. And the bottom part I just simply multiply by conjugated expression Conjugated expression means that you have the same structure but the opposite side be um, between actually those two numbers. And because I multiply the bottom part, so I hopefully multiply the top as well. So here, if I add square root 3 and 3, as square root 3, I'll get 4 square root 3. But because it's square, so I distribute 2, power 2, to both, okay? So here, that's what I will get. And still the top one, square root 3 plus 1. However, let's have a look at the bottom part. Actually, if you remember the formula a minus b and a plus b, that gives you a shortcut for their expanded way a squared minus b squared, okay? So we can rewrite this having that a, in our case, is square root of 3, and b is just 1. Okay, so that's why, finally, the bottom part, I'll rewrite as square root of 3 squared, which is actually 3, and I take away 1. Okay, so next one. 4 squared, 16 square root of 3 squared is just 3. I leave square root of 3 plus 1 because it's impossible to simplify somehow, and over 2. Now I can cancel 16 and 2, and I'll get, so I can cancel that, and I'll get 8 here. So that's why finally I'll get the fraction 24, so, sorry, not the fraction, but the final expression. So it's going to be 24 and square root 3 plus 1. Actually, we arrived to the form that we designed to do, and in this case, a is going to be equal to 24. That's elegant solution, but the basics is to make denominator to be rational, to rationalize, make it rational denominator. Okay, so that's the approach, and hopefully it will be everywhere along the problems. Let's consider problem two. You need to rewrite in the form again, so you have a rational uh, denominator in this fraction, 
but first what I'm gonna do I'm going to factorize 5 instead of 5 plus 25 I'll write so 5 factorized and 1 plus 5 over square root of 3 okay so that's what I have here and what I'm gonna do I'm going to cancel by 5 so I will left with 1 plus 5 over square root of 3 okay and now what I'm gonna do I'm going to I'm going to come to the common denominator okay so 1 over and instead of 1 I can make square root of 3 so that's why I'll have this okay now as you want to say you divided 1 by you divided 1 by here uh, the fraction so square root of 3 plus 5 over square root of 3 so that's why you can flip the fraction and multiply it finally you'll get square root of 3 and square root of 3 plus 5 okay so what you can do you can multiply both parts we know already how it works so we can multiply both parts by square root of 3 minus 5 that the bottom part and the same in the same way we can multiply the top because as you notice in your final expression there is no irrationality in the denominator all right so uh, let's just figure out let's simplify the bottom part it's going to be 3 and minus in this case 3 minus 25 right uh, actually you can let me see if I swap okay it doesn't matter yeah we will have 3 minus 25 and the top one if we multiply it we'll get square root of 9 I just distribute this factor to both inside brackets and I'll get square root of 9 which is 3 and minus 5 square root of 3 okay so finally I'll get I multiply both parts by minus 1 so simply because I know that in the bottom part I'll get negative number so I would like to have it positive and in this case I'll get 22 positive and in this case I just swap 5 square root of 3 and minus 3 okay so let's compare we have let's compare we have a square root of 3 plus b over 22 so that's why obviously a is 5 if you compare with what we arrived to so a is 5 and b is going to be negative 3 okay because negative 3 you can write as plus and minus 3 so that's why b is negative 3 here all right so we found and they're both integers so that's why this is the solution for the second problem and by the way so that's the solution for the first problem okay so uh, let's move next we have the problem 3 here we need to show that expression where a is an integer can be read in this form m and n are also integers okay and finally we need to express m and n in terms of a okay so what I'm gonna do I'm just I think it's a good idea to expand the brackets so square this up and just remember the formula a minus b squared works like a squared minus 2ab and plus b squared so if you expand that you'll get a squared minus double product a by square root of 8 okay and you add up 8 square root of 8 squared which is 8 okay so next step what I've got I've got a squared and square root of, okay a squared plus 8 is better to write because we have the structure first goes m and then goes irrational number with square root as one of the factor so that's why we can rewrite uh, square root of 8 is simply 2 square root of 2 right and that's why it's going to be negative 4a yes and square root of 2 
Okay, so looks like this is going to be m and negative 4 a, so I can rewrite this plus and minus 4a times square root of 2, so that's why negative 4a becomes n in this case. So that's why we expressed m and n through a in terms of a. So that's why m is going to be a squared plus 8, while n is going to be negative 4a. So I think it's it was pretty easy. And let's move to the last problem. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm just copy for just for a while. Oops, sorry. I don't know what happens, but <laughs> that's by chance there was cache, memory cache, I think. Okay, um, let's do that. Um, you have uh, 1 plus square root of p, 1 and square root of p minus 1, or three consecutive terms of geometric sequence. I just remind you that geometric sequence is the sequence that you start, let's say, u1, u2, u3, u4, and the main idea is that u1, if you multiply by the common ratio, like some number or probably expression, that's how you can arrive to u2. And if you write u2 by the same ratio, you'll get u3. And it goes on and on. So that's why un's term is always the previous term multiplied by the ratio. Okay. So because there are three consecutive terms of geometric sequence, it means they follow each other, like u1, u2, u3, for example, or it might be u2, u3, u4. Because you're not said that 1 uh, plus square root of p is the first term. So that's why uh, first you need to find a known p. I think it's a good idea to, uh, to be based on the ratio. So just remember the ratio from here. If you express ratio, it's going to be the next term over the previous one. Okay. Sort of combine questions because uh, it combines sequence with their... Uh, with the thirds, that's why it's pretty hard. Okay, you need to know both topics, so make sure you watch sequences. And now let's try to express ratio. So, ratios un. So, that's why let's take u2, I think, let it be u1, u2, and u3. So, u2 over u1. No matter if the first term or the second term, doesn't matter. I mean, uh, as I said that we are, it's not necessarily if we start from the first term. It might be somewhere, you know, like this, and u1, then u2, and then u3 somewhere. But before, there might be several terms. Okay, but using the general formula, we can write that. And that means we have 1 over and 1 plus square root of p. Okay, and that's going to be the same as ratio as u3 to u2. So which gives us 1, sorry, not 1, but square root of p minus 1 over 1, right? So we've got actually a ratio 1 plus square root of p equals to square root of p minus 1 and over 1. And as you remember how to resolve, you just use the crisscross multiplication. So this part you multiply by that and 1 by 1. Okay, That's how you can easily resolve the ratio. And if you resolve that, the solution is going to be 1 equals to square root of p uh, squared. Again, we're going to use the formula squared minus b squared okay that you have here and that's going to be p minus one so from where you can get p equals two okay so hope you understand how to resolve this ratio because sort of basics and we'll go next so once we know p we found that p equals two we need to find a common ratio of this geometric sequence okay so the common ratio are it's going to be uh, just by definition 
let's take the this one square root of 2 minus 1 I think it will work better yeah so ratio so I just use this ratio use 3 by u2 and just plug the number 2 instead of p okay so that's the ratio and we need to find the next two terms in the sequence so for example here and here so what we're going to do just by definition let's say this is let's say this oops okay anyway this is going to be u4 and that's going to be u5 so how to find u4 so u4 is u3 multiplied by the ratio okay so let's find u4 so u4 is going to be u3 which is uh, in this case square root of p minus 1 so square root of 2 minus 1 times the ratio so times itself so that's why I just simply can uh, square this up and if we square this up we'll get 2 minus 2 square root of 2 and plus 1 so if we simplify that we'll get u4 equals to 3 minus 2 square root of 2 okay so how to find u5 u5 is u4 that we found on the previous stage and actually we can circle that saying that we found this okay and finally u5 is u4 which is 3 minus 2 square root of 2 we again multiply by ratio which is square root of 2 minus 1 okay so let's multi uh, multiply carefully so expand the brackets so we'll get 3 square root of 2 minus 3 and minus 2 times 2 which is 4 okay and finally plus 2 square root of 2 okay make sure you have that and right now let's simplify it so 3 and 2 square root of 2 will give us 5 square root of 2 and minus 7 okay so that's for u5 that's the final solution for all the problems so make sure you got it uh, that was really complicated at least for GCC because that's definitely challenged mass so if you want to explore a level stuff so don't forget to watch other videos dedicated to some topics from a level because i just recently started doing that uh, you can also check mechanics and don't forget to visit zillin's a level class and thank you guys see you later peace out